everyone, uh, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Alvaro Mazón from Camino Real Hunting Consultants. Uh, we are a hunting outfitting company in Spain. As a hunting outfitter in Spain, we, we basically run our operations throughout the whole country, but we're pretty much focused in the mountain hunts. Although Spain is a very tiny country, compared to other European countries. There, there's a wide variation of, of, of species. We have um, 13 different species of which we can distinguish the four different ibex subspecies, which is the most uh, iconic animal that we have and that most international hunters come along from many different places around the world to hunt. So focused on the uh, four different ibex subspecies, uh, the purpose of this video is to show you guys the trip that we will currently run in Spain. We will start on um, in Veseta and then we will move on to Gredos. As many of you will know for sure, uh, these, are, these are the most, uh, the biggest uh, Ibex subspecies that we get in Spain. So we basically have the four, the Veseta, the Gredos, the Southeastern and the Ronda. Uh, Fernando from Mexico is looking forward to accomplish the two biggest ones, so we will start in Veseta first and hopefully we, we're lucky there and after one, two days hunting we'll move, move on to Gredos and uh, search like over there. This is a very special trip because we are, we are hunting with Fernando from Mexico. This will be our third hunt together. Uh, the second hunt in Spain. He previously hunted with us uh, both fallow deer and mouflon sheep up in the Pyrenees. Uh, so this is very special. We, we came very good friends. Uh, so, so we're looking very much forward to this hunt with him. The Vesete hunt started off very, very, very well. The local guides had uh, spotted on the, on the days prior to our arrival a very, very nice uh, Vesete individual. We, we eventually got very early in the morning and within 8.50 in the morning, we had already spotted the, uh, the Ibex. He was looking gorgeous on a, on a mountain just, just a bit far away from us. Creo que el salto que ha pegado ahora sí, ¿eh? ¿Qué tal lo has tirado? Bien, pero... Es que era ahí o no, o se iba. Pues... Muy rápido, pero bien. Un momento de las piernas. Very quick shot in the last second of, of the opening. Um, but we'll see what, what we see there. In. We're going to see if we see any, any blood spore. And we'll, we'll see. 240 yards and 
Fernando took a first shot that, that you guys will be able to see on, on camera. No alcanza a ver si se y cuando saltan es buena señal. Pero no sé si alcanzó a hacer esto. Él, él ha pegado el salto por el alto. Y after 10, 15 minutos, the, uh, the, the Ibexes started moving into a better position. Um, it was a very quick shot. Fernando took uh, his chance and uh, he hit. We could perfectly see that he had uh, hit that, that gorgeous Ibex and, and we, lost, we lost him. We, there, was a, there was a lot of bush, m m big thickets around. So we really didn't figure out what was going on. Ibex right in front of us at 250 or so and uh, the Ibex jumped on here uh, and we thought he might have hit him but we're not certainly sure because we saw him running and apparently he was he looked very healthy so we're just gonna be searching the area for any any blood or any signs of the of the Ibex and but if not, we'll go and chase another one. We'll see. Robert Ferrano? So eventually we got, we got to the place where Fernando shot the Ibex, we, we eventually found blood, it's not, it's not much blood, but since the, uh, the, since the Ibex jumped on the air, uh, we, we are hopeful to, to find him. We don't want to walk over the truck, so, so what, what the guides have done, they've gone and, and, and searched for the dog, and they're coming in a, within an hour or so, and we'll try to, to find him with the dog. <laughs> we would like to take this opportunity to thank um, the uh, IEPES Association, this is the Bloodhound Spanish Association of Dogs. Um, the work they do is just amazing. Uh, the voluntary guides that the association holds be between their members is, is ab absolutely fantastic. We had the opportunity to, to call them last, last evening because uh, Fernando basically won we, we wounded the, that Ibex. We could not find it by ourselves and we got David from, from Teruel to come along with his dog, Delta. She is a six-year-old Bavarian hound, and it was lovely to see the, the amount of work that David and Delta puts together in order to, to do the, uh, the amazing blood trail that we were able to, 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 to witness. ¿Qué ha pasado? Alto, no es una sangre que salga junta a la punta del pecho. La sangre está muy separada, ascendiendo. Mira está el rastro. Hay más de 25 centímetros de separación. Sí, sí, sí. Y, pero es que fíjate aquí, esto puede ser también de la boca. 
que es más acuosa. Fíjate el tipo de sangre. Sí, sí. Se sí, nota de colorada, sí, así, más acuosa. Sí. Pero sí, sí, el tío. Okay, guys. So it's quarter past seven in the afternoon. We shot the ibex 8:50 in the morning. It's been a, it's been a very long day. At once we thought we could find him, find him, but too too much bad of a luck. Um, there was one one point in which the uh, the trail basically disappeared. And not not none of the dogs could could find or follow the tra the trail. So that's all for today. We'll call it a day. And uh, hunting is hunting. So I would like to obviously uh, thank the. Uh, David who came for, for, from 200 miles away. He belongs to the uh, Bloodhound Spanish Association, which is, as, as explained before, it's a very important part of the hunting we do in Spain. Basically, the, each, each local guide with his dog, it's, it's distributed through, throughout the different regions. And once we get this kind of circumstance where a, a, an animal gets wounded, we get, we get a hold of the phone and, and we call them and they come. It's a very, very, kind of them they do it just for on a voluntary purpose and uh, it's it's a way of honoring the game that is wounded so we we thank them and uh, we'll call it a day uh, we'll continue our adventure in, uh, in Gredos in the coming days and uh, hopefully we we get better chance there So we'll basically press the restart button and uh, drive on to Gredos on, on a, with a smile on our faces, looking forward for the next adventure and hoping, hoping that Fernando really gets his, his Ibex now. Hi guys, so we are finally in Gredos. Uh, after two days hunting in Beseda, we're finally here. Uh, the weather seems to be much, much better. We've already started spotting the first group of Hibexes, so so we are holding thumbs, see see what what the day holds for us. Gredos is probably one of the most iconic places to hunt, not only because it holds probably the, the biggest of the ibexes that we get in Spain, but also because Gredos is, I would say, probably the most successful uh, conservation project within any European country. Uh, it is thank, thanks to the hunters that the Gredos ibex uh, today exists. And it's the reason why many hunters around the world travel all the way to Spain to, to, to hunt. And it's, and it's also thank you, it's thanks to you that we, that we are able to enjoy our mountains in the way we do it. And, and hopefully we, we are able to show you guys a, a fantastic hunt with Fernando. Um, and hopefully you, you guys get to see the, uh, the, uh, how special hunting in Dredos is for, for all of us. The ibexes were in big, big herds, whereas hunting in an, in the rut or in the fall season, you would you would find or or gather your your trophy by himself most of the times. That's the good part about hunting in during the springtime.
heard of, of five different males. Um, the wind was blowing not not uh, very good for us, so we just seen, we just went round them, and we got into position where within 200 yards or so. Um, but they've decided to lay down and, and take a siesta, a, sp a proper Spanish siesta. So we're just waiting to see if they if they wake up and, and see if they come in either our side or the other side and we'll have to go and chase them. Uh, so we just have to have patience and and see what, what they do. But they all look very beautiful. Uh, we have been very lucky with the weather. You can see it's already the spring is, spring, spring is picking up. And uh, that's why I always say that hunting in spring is, is, has, has its own advantages. Obviously the weather is a great advantage when you're hunting in the mountain. Look at the kind of day we're having, it's just fantastic. And uh, the fact that the, that the males get together provide us a very good chance of, of searching and looking for the right male. We really want to make sure that we get the oldest and the, and the one which might be looking the, weak, the weakest, the one which we think he might not survive on next winter or next fall season. So we have to wait, um, check with our spotting scopes and, and make the right decision. took a very good shot. We we worked for it and we, we got a 14 year old uh, Billy, which is way more than what we had expected, of course, um, but we were very lucky. So we made it, finally. After a long stalk today, today, we got into position of these Ibexes. They, were, they went for a siesta and uh, it took us like an hour and a half or so for them to, to just wake up. And finally we could uh, spot the, the oldest of the group. There were five in the group. And this is a super, super good, good Ibex. Just what we're looking for. Um, in any mountain hunt, any mountain animal you're, you pursue, the most important thing ever is to focus in age and this particular uh, goat that we have here has 14 year old which is absolutely fantastic for for this kind of ibex so well done fernando i'm very glad uh, after what we did in Peseite and uh, the long trip we've had i'm very happy for you so congratulations you got a, yourself a tremendous ibex look all the character he has just what you're looking for it's got broken horns from his fights during the rut so so we couldn't ask for more. Yes, it was really good. They knew what they were doing. They had the patience that I wouldn't have and <laughs> they did a great job. Thank you. Congratulations, Thanks. Fernando. Luckily for Fernando, that he, I assume he's very happy with the trophy. I mean, he must be very happy with what he got. So, so yeah, we're very happy and, uh, and looking forward to the next one. So, 
I encourage you guys to subscribe our YouTube channel and stay tuned, there will be more coming soon.